I'm gonna give you the top three special strength exercises that we like to utilize to improve the performance in the glide. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dave Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better shot putter, you wanna improve your technique and strength in the discus, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so that we can help you hit those monster PRs. So when we're talking about the glide specifically, we've gotta go into the details behind what we're trying to do as a thrower and as coaches, we've got to really think about every single thing is going to be geared towards improving our performance. And inside the glide, we've got to think about what happens. You know, when we drop out of the back of the circle, when our hips drop and we're getting out of the back of the circle, we want to be patient on that flat right foot if we're a right-handed shot putter. We want to be patient as our left leg drives across to the front of the circle. And then that's where we're gonna really start to ignite our nervous system. We wanna have a rapid drive off that right heel, extend that right knee as rapidly as possible so that it can move to the middle as quickly as possible. And then right before that left foot hits, we wanna open that left arm and finish forward into that toe board as quickly as we can. So we have to look at it from the perspective of, there's a lot of unilateral strength aspects that come into improving the glide. There's a lot of factors behind rate of force development, rate of coordination. And the gliders that have the fastest rate of coordination are typically going to be the ones that throw the furthest as long as their technique is proficient. And that leads us to that second aspect. We know we've gotta be powerhouses. We know we've gotta coordinate at a very high rate, but we also know that there's a lot of technical aspects that go into the glide. We've gotta hit these good positions. We've gotta hold that knee flexion in the middle. We've gotta hold a nice long push that's grounded on the finish. And so what we do is we take all these aspects and then we try to come up with ideas and we utilize these different perspectives and we can create the top three best exercises to improve the special strength inside the glide. Coming in at that number three spot, we're gonna start off right away with the dumbbell shuffle throw. So if we can think about a dumbbell shuffle, we're gonna hold, if you're a post-collegiate thrower or a collegiate thrower, a 30 to a 35 pound dumbbell. If you're still in high school, I recommend a 20 to a 25 pound dumbbell. If you're men, if you're women and you're post-collegiate or you're in college, you can hold a 20 pound dumbbell. If you're in high school, you could probably throw a 15 to a 20 pound dumbbell. And what we wanna focus on here is a nice shuffle throw where we're going to focus on being grounded when the dumbbell comes out of our hand. We want that right knee to be bent slightly. We want our feet to be grounded. We want a flat left foot and we want that right shoulder transferring forward as long as possible. And if we can think about this, what we end up seeing from a strength perspective is we see a huge increase in power output. But from a technical perspective, we can really see some leaks. And when you can think about it with our younger throwers, they'll start to do dumbbell shuffle throws and they'll go to throw that dumbbell and they'll fall backwards. It's like the dumbbell's throwing them the other way because they don't know how to transfer into the transfer leg. They're not transferring forward as well as they possibly can. And that's what is so effective behind the dumbbell shuffle throw is you can get a lot of throws in in a very short period of time. So you're gonna be training the muscular perspective. You're gonna be training that rate of coordination. And on top of that, your throwers are going to learn how to transfer that right shoulder forward to have that big monster finish that's gonna to lead to that glide PR. That second key exercise is going to be the banded A drill. So again, if we can think about that macro perspective behind the glide, there's a lot of technique that goes into play and there's that high rate of coordination. The glide does not have as much time to lead to high rates of force development as the spin does. But if you train at high rates of coordination, you can still develop force 
very, very quickly with the glide. And that's where the banded A drill comes into play. If we can think about this drill, we're gonna be in that A position. The left foot's gonna be at the toe board. The right foot is gonna be in the back of the circle. We're gonna be driving off of our right heel to the power position, to that double support position while our shoulders stay square. Think about Valerie Adams and how well she keeps her shoulders square, how well she keeps her shoulders level. The key here is that right leg is banded. We're gonna have our right ankle banded to an immovable object. And so that's gonna force our right leg to be faster, to be stronger and to be more reactive. You're gonna have this nice long stretch and then a rapid pull forward. And when you pull forward, you're also gonna stick that right down into the concrete and hold it there. And that's where it becomes very, very difficult, but that's where you can increase your stability in the middle of the circle. The band will be pulling back, but the whole goal is to apply force downward. Now we're thinking about ground reaction forces. Now we're thinking about speed in running and utilizing those factors in the circle. If we can think about that ground reaction force pushing down, we're gonna get a greater reaction back into the body when we go to finish the throw. It teaches you how to keep that right foot barely above the circle as it gets to the middle so it's faster getting to that double support and in turn, we can finish a lot bigger. So before we get into that number one key exercise, it's important to realize that this stuff's very, very difficult to program. It's really hard to piece together special strength exercises into a traditional strength-based program, into our traditional throws program. It's hard to think about all these different factors coming into play, but that's exactly what we do for you in our 30 Days to a Better Glide program. You can click on the link down below. You can head over to throwsuniversity.com and you can pick up your own 30 Days to a Better Glide program today. Coming in at that number one spot, we've got the banded glide and the banded glide is going to be similar to the banded a drill i like to put a band around the hips just above the top of your butt and then attached to an immovable object and one of the key factors here is that you can change the tension of the band it's important that when you're doing this exercise that you understand where that seven foot circle is and we're going to treat this as though you are gliding with a shot so you can Pretend you're holding a shot in your neck and the resistance is going to be from that band. We're gonna come out of the back of the circle the exact same way, but utilizing the tension of the band. Now, the whole focus here is getting to double support as quickly as possible and then pausing in double support with as much tension and contractions as you possibly can, because that is where when we start to utilize banded glides in conjunction with dumbbell shuffle throws, we're gonna get to double support faster and the dumbbell shuffle throw is gonna help us finish longer. So now we can train both of these two together and we'll get monster throws. Now, think about when we talked about the banded A drill, think about that ground reaction force that we talked about that's so well studied in the world of sprinting and the world of agility but it hasn't really been studied in the world of throwing. And that's some of the stuff that we're focusing on here is banded glides, when that right hits, when the left hits, we want ground reaction force pushing down into the ground so that we can utilize that energy to hit that monster throw. I recommend doing banded glides at the end of a training session, three, four sets for seven reps and focusing on getting to double support as quickly as possible and then feeling that position, imprinting that position into your nervous system so that you feel stronger and you feel confident in hitting that front and that's going to lead to massive PRs with the glide. If you want more information about glide-based training, you can head over to throwsuniversity.com and you can pick up your 30 days to a better glide program where we walk you through 30 straight days of training guided by me inside of an entire course. If you want more videos about glide-based training, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.